Hey, it's Buddy Lee. Welcome to my channel. So, 4 Loki crushed it in the last gifting event, and as a result, I have this really cool 6 star Kang. Kang is a trophy champion, and his kit is very simple, but actually pretty effective. His SP1 has 100% chance to stun for 2.4 seconds, so since it's 100%, you can stun lock in certain situations like power reserve. Then the SP2 has 100% chance to drain 100% of the defender's power, which is really nice power control. And finally, the SP3 applies a heal block for 12 seconds. So all very simple, but dependable. The only issue is that he doesn't do very much damage. However, we have a nice synergy that fixes this problem very well. So the same synergy with Cable that lets Apoc start the quest ramped up with all four prowess charges also has Kang. And with Kang and Apoc together, Kang will gain a fury buff every 4 seconds giving him 20% increased attack, and this will stack all the way up to 20 fury buffs equaling a 400% increase. So when you apply this extra attack with his consistent utility and the benefit to Apoc, he's actually a really good champion. We're going to test out the 6 star rank 1 Kang in Act 6.3.6. .6. And the reason I wanted to test him here is because I was interested to see if his SP2 power drain would work against the Cap Infinity War boss at the end, who's one of the most difficult fights in the game with very few counters. I'm going to use Odin pre-fights for a little extra pop from those fury buffs, though it isn't needed, and this path has aggressive fury, counter strike, and unblockable specials. We'll be getting a fury buff every 4 seconds, so as the fight goes on we'll be hitting harder and harder. Kang's best without damage masteries since the attack increase will be coming from these furies, and you want to throw a lot of specials with him if you're doing the stun lock or using SP2 power drain to control the fight. I like to use SP2 towards the beginning of the fight as we're building up, and it'll drain all of the defender's power, and then it makes for a nice intercept from the SP2 a lot of the time, which gives a lot of control in the fight if you're good with intercepting. We started the fight critting for only a couple thousand with medium attacks and we're already up to 7k crits at this point. We finished the fight with over 9k medium crit followed by a 23k sp1 which is pretty great for a rank 1 without damage masteries. I'll show one more of these fights along the path and then jump over to the main event Cap Infinity War boss fight but I did use Kang for 6 of the 8 fights on this path and he went through them all very easily.
Alright, time for Cap Infinity War, and when I was thinking to try this fight, I wasn't sure how it would work. This cap has destructive feedback, so I can't do any damage while that's active, or block, or I'll take damage back. He also will only take damage from crits, and the worst thing is Surging Vengeance, so he'll throw his specials in order of SP1, 2, and then 3, and because of this, I'm going to have to use my Power Drain before he gets to SP3 to keep the fight going. However, many Power Control champs fail because of Cap's glancing mechanic. So first thing is bait out cap special 1 and then his sp2. After we've done this we know he won't throw those again and we can start intercepting him as if he's below a bar of power for the rest of the fight. Now I want to be close to 3 bars of power before using my sp2 and power draining cap so that I can get back to that sp2 again more easily. And now we're just testing our ability to intercept on the way back to SP2. If we get there while destructive feedback is down, I can push him just below 3 bars of power and then do a parry into a combo into SP2 to make sure that I have as much power as possible prior to throwing the SP2. Another thing that I'm thinking about while doing this fight is trying to time my SP2 when that destructive feedback is down, since if I'm lucky enough to crit, it'll do a big chunk of damage. This time we do get a crit on the SP2 for a nice 42k in damage. I mess up one of the intercepts and he combos me, but we're hanging on by our thread still. We do have Heimdall on the team for safety as well, but somehow we didn't trigger it from this combo. Adrenaline let us recover 16% health there, which is great because that'll let us do a couple more parries if we need to.
we get another big crit, and at this point I start to feel my heart beating a little faster. Every crit from now on is going to be big. Cap only has 3% left, so one or two more crits max is going to finish this thing. But it all goes down the toilet. I thought indestructible would have lasted longer than that, but maybe since Cap removes the unstoppable, the indestructible goes with it, I'm not really sure. But if Kang wasn't at rank 1, that would have been a solo for sure, and I'm still really impressed that he can do this fight so well. But it all goes down the toilet. I thought indestructible would have lasted longer than that, but maybe since Cap removes the unstoppable, the indestructible goes with it, I'm not really sure. But if Kang wasn't at rank 1, that would have been a solo for sure, and I'm still really impressed that he can do this fight so well. So what do you guys think? Is he just a trophy champ, or does this synergy make him a trophy champ that can be relevant to taking down end game content? Well that's going to do it for this video, if you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.